welcome on this wonderful Thursday, January 27th. Here we are already Jan towards the end of January. It's just amazing how time has flown by for sure. Uh, I'm Audrey DeYoung and this is Audrey Live and uh, thank you for joining us here. Um, we're just kind of getting started uh, and uh, we'll wait for a few people to, to pop on and get um, up on our Facebook stream here. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to say hi and uh, we're really excited about the show today. We have two live guests for you, uh, Kathy Hansen and Gabe Stubbs who will both be um, presenting or giving you little sneak peeks of what they're going to be doing in their Art Waves live spring show uh, classes. So uh, lots to see, lots to do today. So uh, please make sure that you um, mention or comment where you're from uh, in the Facebook feed there. Also, if you have any questions throughout the, the show, uh, make sure you put them in there as well and we'll do our best to, to check the feed during the, the show and answer your questions or we'll definitely get back to you after the show. Uh, we also would really appreciate it if you share and comment and let other people know about it. I know we have, uh, we took about three or four months off, so it's kind of nice to, to get back and let people know that we are definitely um, back on live every other Thursday. Um, also, we do have our Pin It Canada YouTube channel and on there um, you can check out all the past Audrey live shows. So if there's certain um, guests that we've had on that you want to see how they did a project or you just want to go back and see a lot or two weeks ago show with Debbie Cotton or you missed part of today's show, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel Pin It Canada and uh, there you can watch all the past videos and make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell because it's really important you'll get uh, notifications when we do post videos i know i have that with uh, quite a few other um, people as well and it, it is really nice to know so oh yeah that's right that was on and i missed it but now i can watch the repeat so um yeah that would be wonderful for you to do that and again thank you for joining us um Yesterday was Bell's Let's Talk Day, um, and it's uh, the day when people throughout Canada and worldwide have the clear opportunity to make our voices heard in the conversation about mental health illness. Uh, certainly the, the current COVID-19 situation can have an impact on our mental health, and I know we've, we, I'm sure everybody has felt it in one way or another. Um, practicing physical distancing makes it even more important that we make an extra effort to remain emotionally connected with other people. Uh, finding ways to stay connected with friends and family and loved ones uh, will support good mental health and well-being. Uh, I'm just going to show you a quick little video uh, that I watched yesterday uh, that was posted quite a bit. Um, so I think that it just was worthwhile uh, having a quick little look here. Uh, let's see. One moment. Just a reminder, just an ongoing reminder. That was a great video, and, and like I said, I really feel that people are listening to you. So if you feel like you need someone to talk to, or um, there's always somebody that would be listening, whether it's a family member or a friend or a coworker, um, just keep that in mind that there is always somebody listening. Uh, also, consider finding new ways uh, to practice self-care and staying connected, uh, such as reading with a virtual book club. That's kind of a neat thing. You know, you stay connected with people. Even though it's virtual, you're still staying connected. Uh, having a video call over dinner. We've done that before. I know when we've had uh, daughters overseas and things like that, we'll put the computer on the end of the table and have them part of the conversation or the dinner conversation. Texting with friends or streaming a, a group fitness class. Uh, these are just some of the things that could support mental health and well-being. 
Uh, research suggests, of course, for us crafters, uh, it, crafting is much more than just an outlook, outlook for uh, personal expression uh, or a way to pass the time. Crafting has actually helped reduce anxiety, improve your mood, and increase happiness, all of which can be, um, will help fight depression. So just keep in mind all those things um, that, uh, that you can certainly do, all the different crafting you can do, uh, puzzling, you know, there's all sorts of things that can help, um, help depression and fight uh, that feeling of alone, being alone. Um, also this time of year is kind of, I guess a funny kind of year because you've had all those Christmas decorations and all of a sudden you're putting those Christmas decorations away. Um, and sometimes that makes a, a feeling of, you know, loss as well, I, I guess, so to speak. Um, I usually wait till the end of January myself. I leave Christmas decorations up and lights and things like that for, for the good month of January. But, you know, you're not really ready to put those spring or Easter decorations out. Um, but you want to, you know, change up your decorations. So uh, the winter blues creep in and suddenly there's a bigger reason to decorate in the house and make it look pretty and keep your spirits up after the holidays. Um, there's a few things that I have uh, kind of done a little research on. And one, you can kind of see up here, this word, it says, gezellig, gezellig. It's a Dutch word and it means, um, cozy. Uh, my daughter's got me a pillow here from our Dutch store. And uh, you can see that the word gezellig is in the middle and they have all different words. There's just no real word English word for it, I guess, so to speak. Uh, so some of the words on there are friendship and laughter, hospita hospitality, warm, cozy, pleasant, comfortable, coffee with friends. You know, just those feelings are gezellig. Uh, another one is, I kind of did a, a good look on it or it just kind of came up and one was another word and it's called, oh, now I'm not going to, huga, 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 that's it. And it's actually um, a word from, I believe it's a Danish culture type word. Um, it's to have no direct English translation, just like gezellig. There's no real word for it, but the closest would be cozy, cozy. Um, if you ever heard of the word huga, it is a style of living for the Danish culture. Uh, a word that um, just means pleas pleasurable, coziness, togetherness, um, contentment. So some different ways that you can decorate, you can kind of see behind me, I've kind of changed things up a little bit just to make me feel a little bit more cozy, so to speak. So greenery, they said during the month of January, February, these winter months, greenery, getting some green plants in the home and just to fill the area with greenery. Um, you can still use your garland and branches from Christmas time, keep them up, which I do just take the greenery or the red stuff out. So it doesn't look so Christmassy. Uh, also just, you know, a couple plants in your different space is a, a real calming effect around the house. Another one is just flowers. Every now and then pick up yourself a bunch of flowers and just put them on the table. And it certainly just, just makes it a cozy, warm uh, feeling in your house too. And it's, it's a great pick me up as well. Uh, lighting, candles, uh, always bring a glow and warmth to the rooms. You can see here, I've got a mason jar. I don't know if I can bring it much closer. It's a mason jar, and uh, we've put in just uh, some um, mini lights in it, and then it's just battery operated. So something like that, and if you're not comfortable with the actual candles, you certainly can get the ones that are like the battery operated, and it, it certainly adds a coziness to the room. Um, it's a great idea, and just, uh, you know, yeah, makes everybody feel cozy. Uh, a blanket or pillow. So, you know, you've got a really nice, comfortable blanket, cozy blanket to have on your on your couch or your chair and, and some cozy pillows um, helps ha bring that feeling as well. And then, of course, items that have meaning or some sort of uh, sentiment. Um, one of the big things they like to decorate with, and I do too, bring them back out all in January, is family photos. You know, I've got family photos everywhere and just bring those frames back out and put the family photos up. Uh, and it just kind of chases away the winter blues, you know. You kind of look at the family or whether it was from vacations. Um, I've got one here. 
Oh, 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 I had to put my headset on today, so hold on, see if I can get this one here. Oh yeah, there it is. So here's one that we, one of our family photos that I cherish and have at the door, so when I come in, I see it all the time. Uh, and this was when Micah was in between hospitals, so to speak, so it was around the beginning of October and uh, just before his chemotherapy treatments, and it was just a wonderful weekend. We had such a great time, so every time I look at that picture, it just gives me the reminder of that warm, wonderful uh, time that we had as family, so just adding that to your decor is uh, is really important. So if you have any ideas or anything that you do that brings you joy or brings a coziness or decorating that you do in January, uh, just to help that transition, please share it on the Facebook feed. And then that way I certainly can, uh, can mention it to everybody as well. So, well, let's get right in with our guests. Our, our first guest today is Kathy Hansen and she is from Upper Michigan. For the past 35 years, Kathy has traveled the world teaching workshops. She's known for her vast knowledge of subject matter and her unique special effect uh, technique in multiple mediums. Her workshops are as uh, varied as the audience she presents them to. She has taught at art leagues, decorative painting chapters, colleges, state art, educator conventions, and professional development events for individual school districts. Kathy has won numerous awards, let me let her in here, um, for her work, published over 80 articles in art magazines, is a featured artist in several art decorating books. Welcome, Kathy. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm hanging in there, how about you? Very, very good. Is it nice and cold up there today? Uh, I yeah we're minus four i think fahrenheit oh that's not bad not bad <laughs> oh dealing with the studio with no heat though oh my that's not good <laughs> so we got about six space heaters in this room we've blocked off all the other rooms the new furnace comes next tuesday so oh wow you can't wait <laughs> yes no wilderness woman here <laughs> Well, Show that, go on, right? Yes. Well, that's one thing too. I forgot to mention when I was talking about the coziness is wearing that cozy turtleneck or that cozy sweater. And I can see, I, I'm like you, I like my turtleneck. I like to be nice and cozy. And <laughs> well, today we even have like under armor leggings on. And I mean, I, I give a whole new meaning of the word layered right now. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Awesome. But nothing's going to stop us from doing our art, right? No, exactly. You got to put gloves on. You're okay. <laughs> We've done that too. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. So one thing I just wanted to ask you too was um, this past year or so has been difficult for everybody. I know you've had a lot of challenges over the last year or so, definitely. Um, but what positive thing? Is there something positive that's happened that you can see over the last uh, year or so that you can share with us? You know, I was thinking about that last night when you said you were going to ask that. And it was like, for me personally, the best thing that came out of last year is because, you know, travel was limited, I actually got to stay home. Yeah. You know, um, being head of art and education for General Pencil, besides doing my own travel teaches and big conventions, had me on the road 20 to 26 weeks. I mean, wow. I was, you know, and so many things are, were in that list of when I have time, I'm going to do this, getting to be home. You know, I am not known for my technology. It's made me learn technology, still learning. Um, but, you know, for the Zoom classes and a lot of the state art educator conferences went um, virtual. virtual. Yeah. I actually had to learn, I mean, the first one when they're like, we're going to send you a template for our virtual platform and you got to load all your info. And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I got to do so, what? <laughs> you know, believe me, I'm still calling a lot of my friends. Ah. But, you know, yes, getting to be home to help with hubby's health, getting to know this. Um, I have so many piles so when I have time to get to, you know, being able to address them. Um, and the fact that everyone knew they still had to stay at home, but they wanted that interaction. We all got on the Zoom board, yeah. you know, yeah. to be able to teach it. I mean, that's been my sanity through all this. You know, I just getting to share, see what they do. I learned from them just as much as they learned from me. 
which they don't realize, but we all do. It's like, cause we all look at things differently and ask different questions. So I would say being home in zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you still have that connection. I mean, it's, it's not the same as actually being in a classroom, but there's at least we still have that connection with a lot of your students, with a lot of your peers, things like that, that you can, you can, and actually I think for some people, they say they have more opportunities well, I would have never met you no, if no, it hadn't no. been for this, because you're always so good about let's give them a new face or something no one else is doing. You reached out to me as well as others have, you know, so we can thank that, too. We all have met new people. New people have been brought in our life through this platform Exactly. because we all can't be everywhere at the same time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Good, good, good. Um, and also, what are some of the new products or uh, mediums or a new craft you've done, something like that over the last year or so? You know, um, companies kind of stalled for a long time, too. They've also found a new way to reach out and communicate. I have so many boxes a new product that people have just sent whether i mean i cannot believe the amount of different pens and stuff that are out there now <laughs> pens that look like chalk pens that look like paint you know pens that varnishes can go over um so that's actually one of my goals for this year is again going through this platform through my um business facebook page and i'm just going to start doing little videos and posting hey guys I played around with this, you know, um, the platform I used to have with Paintworks magazine was that column throughout the whole year on what's new, you know, we've lost that magazine. So again, going to take advantage of this virtual, um, got lots of new, cool, fun product. Um, a lot of the companies don't want to talk about yet because they're not, they they can't ship yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they they can't make enough. Right. Well, more and more companies lately, they either have the product, but they have too many people out in shipping or they have all the components, but one, and they're waiting on it to come in or uh, the thing, you know, being fortunate enough to be working hand in hand with a lot of companies. I really, I'm amazed at what they've had to do to come through this, you know? Wow. Yeah. 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 Good, good, good. Well, Well, tell us a little bit about your classes for art waves live and i'm going to pin you so you can talk about the class and maybe do our a little demo for us uh i can do that for you um i just did want to mention one more thing though um i am going to be creating a lot of new um classes for general pencil too that are going to be free so i don't know if at any point in time you could like put my email address up if anybody is interested in knowing any of these things um you know again another great way for just little fun tips or tricks or a class or whatever so perfect sounds All right. good sounds good let's pray when i switch i'm not froze yay okay um i don't know uh, for those of you that are new to me um i've never been about just creating a project i tend to be Um, a technique person. So as I found new ways to work with product, I'm like, all right, what subject matter does that lean itself to? And so then the class then is created. Is this blurry to you? No, it looks great. Perfect. Good, because in my little guy up here, it is. Um, So mine are always technique orientated. And uh, this watercolor pencil one, it's just fun and simple. And I chose to add the Zentangle um, accents to it because it really it goes from one look to another look just with the addition of inks and stuff. So this is what it looks like prior to it. And I don't know if you can see this up close. There are like 11 different ways you can manipulate manipulate a watercolor pencil and they each give a total different look. Like some of these are solid bold colors. Some of them have uh, a a soft and a hard edge involved in them. Some of them have several colors merging together. This one kind of shows some of these different ones. Some are very, very bold, some are softer. So again, there's a lot of techniques taught in here as well as you know placement of where you want solid or soft colors to 
carry the eye through the design. So that is my Zentangle one. And here's just a quick example. I mean, just look when you isolate them. So many different ways to work with them. So that's what this Zentangle little uh, watercolor pencil project is all about. Um, you'll learn like six different ways to um, apply the pencil to get a slightly different look here. And then we'll even go further into like what technique really lends itself towards something solid like a house as opposed to something soft like a pedal. So not only hopefully they'll all find it fun, but they're gonna come away with a lot of education on this one. The next one, again, another watercolor pencil, and you can tell totally different look with this one, totally different techniques. Not only spattering, but grading the pencil tip for you know real sharp, image um, little texture particles, really bold to very soft diffuse, you know, making elements look realistic. So that is my second one. This is called Beach Memories. <clears throat> and the third one, I decided not to do um, watercolor or acrylic because so many people say, I love pencil art, I could never do it. Yes, you can guys. It starts out just like any acrylic. It starts out with a line drawing. This is not a drawing class. This is a graphite project class. So you will, you do not have to do the drawing. You will have a line drawing that you're going to put on your paper. And what this class is all about is taking it from looking one dimensional to three dimensional. And it's all about values. It's all about values. Um, having a minimum of three values in each area. But again, you notice sometimes we apply it via the pencil tips, sometimes it's through subtractive, um, and then sometimes it's through lin just linear um, additions. And um, it is a great learning piece. So many people that also take painting classes for me say, you know what, once I understood drawing, I became a better painter because they're all related, we just do it different ways. The secret is instead of base coating your, and then adding your lights and darks, it's all um, with what degree pencil and how you apply it. You know, it starts out um, just one value and then the addition of a second value and then the addition of the third value. So um, where you hold and you can the same Degrees can make something soft to much bolder. Again, depends where you hold the pencil when you're applying the pigment and if you're heavy handed or light handed, soft handed. So I thought maybe I would just play around with pencils for a few seconds for you guys. You usually work with. I just have a quick question for you. Sue Potts is asking, um, are these general pencils available in Canada? And she said, yeah. are they WC pencils, watercolor pencils? Um, the watercolor pencils, yes, you do have Canadian distributors. Again, my email address, feel, I'm going to have to find out from general, but I know they have Canadian. I've actually been to, okay, above Seattle. I'm forgetting the name of the huge store and they have like three or four in Canada. I'm totally blanking, but I've even been there. I know these are sold in Canada. I do know. Um, and you know, the main reason I picked General's products, I was using their products. Actually, that's how I got the job. They saw me teaching workshops using their product and said, our pencils do this. Would you do this for us? Um, I picked them because their art is great, but they were the most cost effective. You know, I've always been about that. I'll pay extra if something can do something, something else can't. But, you know, they haven't let me down in 30 years, all, whether it's their Kimberly graphite or their Kimberly watercolor pencils, they, they haven't let me down. So I did this quick little visual here, just to show you guys, um, pencils come in 18 to 20 degrees, depending on the company. And the harder the pencil is, the soft, the lighter the line is and the thinner the line is the softer it is, the darker it is, and the wider the line is. So I have a 2H right here. 
And then HB is kind of neutral. And then I start going soft. See how the 2B is lighter than the HB and the 6B is darker than the 2B. But even look at the lines get wider, the softer the pencil is. And we usually use either an HB 2B 4B or an HB 2B 6B. Those are your, your, your three basic pencils. And, um, and then your H comes in for fine lines. So I started to even tell you, it's like where you hold it. We all like to do the death grip, I like to call it, or the handwriting position. When we're trying to apply pigment, you don't wanna do that. That is just for detailed lines or working in very small areas. It tends to lay off heavy. So when you are filling in an area, let's say it is you know, a petal, and you notice, even when I did my petal, I didn't totally draw a line. That's the first big no-no, because you're going to have the same value all the way around, and that flattens something. Do you see when you look at one that's finished, there's light and dark values just within the outline of it? It's an example of just some of the fun little things. When laying in color, you want way back here, put your hand way back here, very, very light touch. If you want something darker, you don't press harder, you layer more because you will embed that pigment into the paper and it's not gonna wanna go anywhere. Paper makes a difference too. We go over there, that in class. Some paper just sucks the pigment right in and I don't care how good you are, you are not gonna get it to move. That's good if you want something stationary. If you're gonna put color on top of it, so then it won't lift and it won't muddy your colors. You, you know, there's just so many little things you get to know, just like in painting, we learn different techniques, you know, different brushes give different effects. It is the same with pencil art. So this would be my first color. If I want it to really stop about here at, and soften out to nothing like a side float, I'm going to stop it about right here because it's going to grow as I blend it. The, you can use a blending stump or a tortillion. This is a tortillion. And another mistake people make is they're right up on this tip doing this. Well, yes, it blended that pigment out beautifully, but it pushed it into the paper. You only do that, say, if I wanted to see how I can blend out that line and soften it. That's the only time you really use the tip. You want to drop it, pick it up between two fingers. And now you're going to do circular motions. And you know you have the right amount of pigment down when all the lines merge. Do you see how much different that looks than that? You would uh, blend out this way if you were working, say, on a log, a house, something like that. How you do it is to even back up further and you just make less contact as you're working it out further and further and further and further. It gets lighter and lighter, but it still gives you that textural effect. On petals, we want it like this. So once I reach that line, then I continue to pull away from the line You see how that just softens out to nothing? So that's one of many ways that you can blend. Then you would go to your next value, which would be the next one, which is darker and fill in even less of an area. For a petal, I would blend it out this way and then go to my darkest value, which is 6B and place it even smaller Now, can you see how suddenly we're building all this value? It's just different value exchanges that go on. You know, we'll go into the different types, you know, of erasers you would use depending on how aggressive or light it is, or if you just want to lift it out and adjust the value with the needed eraser. Pen erasers, and then coming in with linear embellishments. Um, sometimes we add linear, small tip stuff on top of blend it out, depending the area of the design. So, I mean, there is some, we're gonna approach it so many different ways and probably use about seven or eight different techniques total 
to get this final effect that really gives it all this depth and realism. So I'm hoping people are gonna wanna try it. It's so easy, guys. The, I give you so many visuals. We step-by-step step through everything. It looks like a lot of fun and just a lot of learning for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, do you have your other pieces? I know you showed us the Zen feather. Do you yeah. have your beach piece there as well? Ah, oh, there it is. Did you show it before? Yeah. Oh, you did. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, and um, this one, believe it or not, I mean, they're all really cost effective. That's another thing I really do is I, and, and this, this, especially this piece, I think there's only like on both of these, <clears throat> there are only like four pencils involved in each one of them. It's showing you three different ways that you can create additional colors. So you get this whole range of uh, colors and values um, with a super limited palette, you know, super limited amount of supplies. Um, kits aren't even really necessary because you're doing them on a piece of paper. Um, I will make um, the pencil all available through me if they want in a small kit. Uh, but I also will make sure that I know exactly where and whom they can purchase them from if they just want to get them locally. Perfect. Perfect. I do see that, um, Corey, my, my, my daughter, my assistant here has put on, there's a couple of different, uh, Opus art. Opus. Supplies. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one, uh, and they're in BC and there is an artist supply store in Chatham, Ontario. And somebody also mentioned that, uh, quite a few of the Michaels are carrying them as well. Now, um, and I will, whoever signs up for the class, some of them are available, you know, in sets of 12 or 24, but some of them actually, for instance, like the Zentangle, let me grab this. Um, <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, the Zentangle Art even got put on this. This small little set right here of four colors is the colors for the Zen Tangle. Um, I don't know if you guys ordered from Dick Blick at times too for Canada. I recently found out Dick Blick online, you can even buy all their pencils individually. Oh, so wow. like, if, I mean, you might turn around and have, oh, I have, you know, three of the four or five of the six or whatever. Um, I only need one. I don't want to have to buy a big set. Dick Blick sells them individually. Perfect. And I am a, um, I'm an email away from anyone who signs up for the class with any kind of questions. I will most likely, most likely even maybe even do a fun little video clip I send off prior just to make sure everybody knows, you know, exactly what they need. These are all limited supply classes. Perfect. Perfect. Maybe you can flip yourself up so we can see you again. <laughs> and we have, we have put on your website and your email address. So it's www.kathyhanson.com. And the email address is kathyhanson at gmail.com. And I see Corey's also even put the general pencil website up. So there's lots of information there for everybody uh, to check out where you can get some of the supplies. Or if you have any questions, just to send Kathy a, an email and I'm sure she will answer you. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway thank you so much kathy hopefully you'll get warm very soon thanks so much for having me i hope everyone has a wonderful day and awesome i hope to see you in class yeah sounds perfect thank you so much <laughs> bye 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 that's great. It's great to see and just get a little bit of tidbit of information uh, from the teacher about what the class is going to be all about. I mean, you might feel, eh, I'm not sure if that's something I want to do. And now you've seen it and you see, you know what, I, I can do that. I not, or I want to learn how to do that. So lots of great opportunities there. So thank you. Thank you again, uh, Kathy, for uh, talking to us and for that great demonstration. So our second guest today is Gabe Stubbs. Uh, she was born in Berlin. I did not know this, so I'm learning something too. And she came to Canada as a child just before they built the wall. Gabe was raised in Toronto and currently lives in Mississauga, Ontario. 
Her journey in decorative painting began when she saw the opportunity to learn from someone who made a name for herself within the painting uh, industry in a very unique way, and that was Donna Dewberry. She was fascinated by how her easygoing style inspired new painters. And I, I know that firsthand. I have a friend of mine that we went to a show, and she literally sat the whole, I don't know if it was the Hoot Show or SDP, Janice Alcock. She sat there almost the whole time just watching Donna Dewberry while we continued to shop. We always knew where to find her. And she was a new painter, a fairly new painter at that time too. Um, the opportunity for her to teach new painters intrigued her. Gabe certification brought her to meet and make new, many new creative friends while working at Michael's teaching the one stroke painting technique. She also hosted um, kids' birthday parties, taught at high school, taught at junior high class, and enjoyed uh, teaching Donna Dewberry's one-stroke technique. Uh, Gabe is also a member of the uh, of two Ontario art groups. I'm going to bring her in here. Uh, one is the uh, Harbour Side Painters of Canada, which is in Oakville, and the other is the Hamilton Area Decorative Painters, which is in Dundas. And I've I've actually uh, gone and visited both of those groups, so they're just wonderful group of ladies. So. Being an artist is core to her self-identity, and she is forever grateful to the artists that have shared their talent with her. Welcome, Gabe. Oh, you got to unmute. I can't hear you. I can see you. There we are. There we are. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Wonderful to have you on the show today. Yeah, good to see you today. <laughs> and you look very cozy too, you know, like those scars and the colors. <laughs> it's just, uh, we have to find ways to feel good about ourselves and feel cozy on these cold winter days. Definitely. I know this morning when I, I got up. I match my colors with the oh! Amazing. You are just wonderful. Just wonderful. <laughs> I know this morning when I got up, it was like minus 14. And I'm like, oh, that's just too cold out there today. <laughs> it's snowing a little bit out here. So is it? Yeah. That. Which is beautiful too. When it's just a little light snow. I, I don't mind that. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. So anyway, I'll ask you as well. I know, you know, the last year or so has been difficult for everybody. And um, do you have anything positive or a positive thing that's happened to you over the last year or so that you as well want to share? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I know during the last two years, it's been pretty tough. And I've been pretty grateful for my art room, which is like full of stash, lots of craft supplies and paints and colors and brushes. So um, I'm really grateful for all the collecting I've done over the years. Um, another thing that I, I really like to do uh, during 2020 and 2021 is I used my front window as my art gallery. So um, I had so many pieces of art. So I started putting them out on the window because people were going for walks and, you know, kind of dragging along and always the same street. So I put the art in the windows and like people were actually making comments and saying they're really looking forward to, you know, when I change the window, because I would change that, it kind of on a weekly. That's so a that was, uh, great idea. Such a great a idea. Great idea. Like artists bringing some light into this bleak time. So um, <laughs> that was uh, that was kind of my contri contribution to something good happening. Yeah, in yeah. Well, I think that's a lot of people, they just have to find those little pieces of what they can do to to share their love like you you have a love for art obviously mm -hmm. and just sharing that and yeah it's kind of neat for people to see the different things that are happening in the windows and and uh, as they go by so yeah that was great perfect perfect mm -hmm. um what are uh, maybe some of the things that you've been working on are there different things that you've done this year there are new mediums or new projects or new crafts that you've kind of taken up because we have all this extra time at home <laughs> oh definitely they um, joining all the you know creative teachers that are on on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube and they've got videos so um, I've joined the plaid website which is um, with Andy B Jones and let me just show you what we just did I was gonna say they he, I know his lunch and learn is just before this show so it's uh... <laughs> yeah this was one we just did oh beautiful um, so nice like they you know, they've got so many videos out there that we can partake with and uh, look at and enjoy and paint along. And yeah. um, 
also I'm part of two um, art groups. And of course, I think you mentioned that. One is in Oakville and one is in Hamilton or Dundas, Ontario. Um, and we still, uh, we've kind of switched to Zoom all during 2020. And um, we were always meeting online. I mean, um, on site in a, yeah. in, um, a church in Hamilton. And, um, but now with all the restrictions, uh, we, we set up Zoom much like you did with the art waves. And it's allowed us to um, have our meetings uh, virtually. And uh, we also recently had Lydia Steves kind of um, do one of our, so that was something I part uh, partook or, <laughs> or, you know, participated in. Yep, we did, yep. uh, you can kind of see the little owl here and that oh, was colored pencil. Beautiful. So that was another one we did. We did a, he was pretty good and that's colored oh, pencil. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, very so we nice. We did a couple of pieces. I try to keep them up in my art room so you know I come in here and get inspired so. yeah yeah perfect perfect well maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh the project that you're going to be teaching at the art waves live uh, spring show and give us a, a quick little demo I think what were you demoing on the twisted rope gonna technique do part of the twisted rope here <laughs> ah perfect perfect okay so I'm going to pin you so everybody can see you and then you can uh, show them the piece oh, okay. talk about it. Okay, I was going to get in with my phone. Oh, yes. Sure yeah, we better that... have you do that a minute. So yeah, then we sorry, can, uh... just, uh, Oh, to no do problem. That. She's going to, I'm going to say she's going to talk about her piece and uh, what uh, a good flat brush a difference between a good flat brush and a nasty flat brush. <laughs> mm, that sounds interesting. And about proper cleaning, which is, I think, something that we all forget to do a lot because you're busy, you're, you're, you're painting, and then you just kind of leave them in the water or that sort of thing. So I'm not uh, sure whether it's going to let me. Um, it just seems to be saying it can't, doesn't like the website. So I don't know if you can see me coming in. Uh, not yet. I'm still waiting. I don't see the. <sighs> you know, the gremlins. <laughs> That's well, okay. I might have to do this another way. Um, but to start, I'm just going to talk about the brushes, the bad okay. brushes and the good brushes. I and, will pin um, you then. There you go. Because part of what I'm going to show you here has to do with a good brush. So this is actually a bad brush. And if you can see how fluffed up that's become, um, it really should look like uh, this one. So it should give you a chisel edge, not this will never give you a chisel edge. So sometimes when you come to classes, if you bring like the worst brush you have, um, that's not a good plan. Um, if you are doing any stroke work at all, um, I know this piece doesn't look like it has any stroke work in it, but it, it does use it, or I do use stroke work for the, the rope. Um, so that's one thing to, you can still keep this brush. I still use it quite often to base coat and I use it for varnishing. Um, it's not totally useless, but definitely if there's any stroke work involved, you want a brush that's going to give you that has a chisel edge um, that will give you a nice crisp line and that will pop back nicely. So what's happened to this brush is I haven't cleaned it probably properly at some point and the paint has dried in the ferrule. So in this part where the brush meets the little silver piece and that's what's kind of splayed all the all the bristles. So even if even if I were to wet this brush, you never get that nice chisel edge. Um, so on this piece, I'm just gonna show it. Those are the brushes bit. I put aside for my grandkids. That, well, <laughs> see, that's mean. That's <laughs> you know, well, they, just they tend of... to just slap it on, but if you're gonna do some, you know, nice uh, floating, like this floating technique here, you want a little bit of a good chisel edge to get like around the edges of that, um, where which uh, a nice brush will help you do. Um, so with this piece, I, I do a background where we do like a little wooden board 
So it looks like board, but it's actually just a flat canvas. And then the balls we're going to put um, during class, we'll do the shine on the ball. And I'll show you how to develop that so that it, it has a round appearance. It looks like a, a round ball, even though the surface is flat. Um, and then I do a little bit uh, of shine there and then nice rope. So I'm not sure how I'm going to actually demo that with, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to put, uh, hmm, I'm going to put it kind of up this way and hopefully I can, I shouldn't really put it on my piece, but I'm just going to jerry rig something here because my phone isn't isn't connecting for some reason. Hmm. Okay. We always have options. There's always plan B, right? We always have options. <laughs> There's always an option here. Okay. There we go. I know it's just jerry rigged, but this is uh this is gonna be the piece and I'm gonna pick up a couple of colors. Um, and what I'm going to show you is just uh, creating a little rope. So I'm using different colors that are on, than are on my piece, but it's the same technique. This is called an S stroke. So I'm going to use my three quarter inch flat. So I'm going to use the chisel edge to begin that to begin that uh, S stroke. And I'm going to put it on the piece. I'm going to do this backwards, but so it's a series of S strokes. So it's going to test your test your powers or practice. So I'm going to just load up my flat brush with a little bit of paint. And hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm going to start on my chisel edge. I'm going to push down and then come up. So this is it's not the best S stroke. It's a little hard for me to do it sideways this way, but um, I'm, then I'm going to leave a little space because I, I want to make rope with two different colors. So I'm going to go down below here, leave a little space so I can put the other color in between. On the chisel edge, push, and then come back to the chisel edge again. So it's kind of I'm going to make them a little straighter, hopefully. But if it was flat, it would be straighter. Just going to do a couple more. There we go. So I've got them kind of in a row. Of course, um, when you're doing the project itself, you're going to have guidelines so that you can make them smaller. These are kind of exaggerated. I'm using a bigger brush just so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to change color. And I'm just going to put the other S strokes in between so that you have two different colors going on. Sorry, this will be much better with the camera, but all right. So in you're between, doing, you're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah, in between, I start on the chisel edge, press down, ooh, and go up. You just touch that off. And again. Making that a little messy. Do it again. Oh, let me just fix that one up. I don't like the way it looks. Because <laughs> I can't see it when it's sideways, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna try again here, chisel edge, push down. And they don't have to be perfect because we're gonna add different things to this. So there, if you look closely there, you've kind of got a rope, like it's big, but on the piece, we're gonna make it a little smaller. So what we're gonna add next is we're gonna add a shine to this. So we add a shine to the center, meaning we do a little bit of a highlight, a lighter color in the middle, and then on both edges, we do a little shading so that you end up with a rounded look so it doesn't look flat. So that's, that's kind of the rope technique, the twisted rope. Unfortunately, I can't uh, show you that. The, uh, the shine. <laughs> I don't know how many more minutes we have. <laughs> well, we're down to the last couple minutes here. So that's, I was just going to say if there's something else you wanted to, I can 
put us back together again here. I can remove the pin. And that way that we're side yeah. by side. There we go. That was great. You did a great job. Well, because I know it's not easy. It, to... It's not easy to, to kind of do it no. sideways. <laughs> <laughs> but I see the effect. That is wonderful. I never would have thought about doing it that way. And that's really neat. So it is. Um, and what I what, of course, is the the highlight of this piece is the balls themselves. So that one takes a little bit more time because you're you're building a highlight um, kind of like a stacking toy where yeah. you're putting, um, you know, the lighter, the red, and then you move to an orange and then you move to a lighter orange and a lighter yellow and then ah. the white on top. So it's a bit of a stacking process and sometimes you have to dry the piece in between, yeah. but yeah. Uh, to build that highlight up on your, on your ball. So I thought Wonderful. to demo uh, because it's a shortened time, I'd just do the the twisted rope. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. And if anybody has any questions of Gabe, her email address is gabestubs at yahoo.ca. So if you have any questions about the class, um, yes. it is called Christmas Ball and it'll be on the Thursday from 3 till 7 p.m. Eastern. So get your registrations in. We're only taking so many per class. So um, I know that would be an awesome class to take and uh, we're really excited that that you're teaching with us it's your first time with us and we're teaching you've been coming for years taking classes and everything i and have I, been i love to see it and i've seen it so much over the years of of students that have progressed themselves and then start designing and then start teaching and it's it's just such an amazing process and i just want to congratulate you on that so thank you so much yeah yeah so anyway gabe thank you so much for joining us and um yeah, Thank have a you, great Audrey. day. All right, Thank take you for care. Everything you do. Oh, you're welcome. Take bye bye. Care. Bye. Yeah, it's just wonderful to to see people just growing and growing, and and Gabe certainly is is one of those. So, thank you again, Gabe, for for teaching for us at the Art Wave Show, and also uh, for being on the show today and uh, sharing a little bit of a sneak peek into your class. So that that was wonderful. Um, our next show is February 10th, so that's in two weeks from now, and uh, our, our live guests will be Jill Fitzhenry, a lot of people know her as Jilly Bean, and Anna Marie Oak, and I don't know if there's many out there that follow them, I know there is, they, we kind of call them the Thelma and Louise of, of the creative art world, so I know it'll be an awesome show, and we'll really enjoy having them with us as well. So you don't want to miss that show, make sure you put that on your calendar. Um, again, I'm Audrey DeYoung. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was just great to share so much information about the upcoming Art Waves Live um, virtual spring show, which is uh, April 26th to May 1st. And you can go to our website, uh, c2cevents.com. And uh, on the top, there'll be little links and the one will say Art Waves Live Spring Show. And right there, you'll see the catalog and all the classes and uh, there's a registration sheet there or you can do an online registration. Either way is great. So uh, again, see you in two weeks, um, Thursday, February 10th. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. And thank you for joining us. Bye for now.